Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on and give you a little information tonight about seeds. I know that when I first started growing, I kind of just went to Lowe's and bought whatever they had on the shelf and I didn't always have great results with those. Some of those things were fantastic, but some of them weren't. Um, I'm growing for very high production and so there's certain plants that I grow that Lowe's and Home Depot don't carry. And I wanted to sort of explain those to you, why I grow them, what you're gonna get from that plant versus um, just a standard plant. But let's first start talking about legumes. Okay, so one of the peas that I grow, it's called PLS 595. I grow a lot of this. Um, this is your regular standard green English pea. Um, I really like this type of pea. Um, it is high production, it's a hybrid. It's high production. Um, it sort of grows in a bush type fashion. And so it doesn't need to be trellised as much as some other pea types, you know, your typical vining types. These guys only get to about 24 inches high, the plant. Um, but the pods will be about five inches long and they will be full of 10 to 11 nice size green peas. So very high production, lots of peas per pod, and they also produce all at the same time so I can harvest all at once, preserve all at once, and be done with it. Um, the next legume that I plant is a Blue Lake 274 bush bean. Um, this is actually an heirloom. Um, this is your typical green bean. This produces about a six and a half inch green bean. This is a bush variety. You can get this exact type in a pole variety. Every time I grow the pole beans, I have horrible times with um, Japanese beetles. And I do have Japanese beetles at this property. They do plague me on other crops, but not for the bush the Blue Lake 274 bush bean. I have not had a problem with these. These also will produce all at once, which is excellent for canning. The next legume that I plant is called a cowpea. Now you may not be as familiar with cowpeas as the other types of legumes. This is called a razor, an Ozark razorback cowpea. Cowpeas are awesome. There is no maintenance to this plant. Um, this is an heirloom. I plant this and it's sort of like set it and forget it like your crock pot. Um, it'll grow in a bush type, um, a bush type plant. They produce really long pods with a ton of these little beans in it. I have had no pest pressure from these. These love the heat and they don't mind drought. You treat them just like any other type of dried bean when you're cooking. Um, and so these will store probably indefinitely if you were to store them in a mylar bag with an oxygen absorber or something like that. Um, this is one of those no fail kind of a crops. So that's it for my legumes that I wanted to talk about. The next thing I wanna talk about are brassicas. So your brassicas are things like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower. Um, my number one go-to for cabbage with this is it's called an early golden acres cabbage. This is ready in 60 days. So by the time I plant this in the spring, this is ready before it gets too hot and will cause it to bolt. I also like this variety because in the fall, I can plant this and this will be ready before my later variety of cabbage. Um, this will produce about a four pound head. It stores very well and I haven't had any problems with this with slugs or worms. Um, and so this has been a really good one for me. The next type of cabbage that I plant is late flat Dutch. I don't plant those in the spring because these take about a hundred days to get to maturity. And by the time these are ready to be mature, it's too hot for them. But this is my second crop in the fall time. So after the early golden acres has matured, these will still be in the ground and these have about another 40 days until these are ready to harvest. Now the late flat Dutch, they can be 10 to 15 pounds and um, they're great storage. So I simply put those in my refrigerator and these will keep for a long time. And my next brassica is gonna be broccoli. This is uh, Waltham 29. You can get this at Lowe's and Home Depot as well. Um, this variety I like because it will produce a nice head. And once you harvest that center head, and that's what I use to do mainly our preserving for the year for broccoli, this will throw off many, many side shoots that you can use for fresh eating. Um, you can preserve that as well, but you don't get a ton of harvest at once with the side shoots. 
uh, just enough for, you know, dinner a couple nights a week. So still a really good producer. So Waltham 29 broccoli is a great one to grow. Um, another one with the same name almost, <laughs> it's a butternut squash. It's called Waltham butternut squash. Um, this is an heirloom. What's nice about this one is that although it does show signs of disease like my other squashes in the garden, um, like powdery mildew or downy mildew, this still produces for me. This will produce a large fruit with a really small um, seed cavity inside. So you're getting a lot of flesh um, compared to seeds, which is really nice. So, um, and this actually stores forever. I have probably about 20 butternut squash sitting on my shelf from last year. Um, and those were harvested midsummer. So, and we're into February now, so that's quite a long time. My last squash that I like to grow is a Long Island cheese pumpkin. This is a pumpkin. It's beautiful. It's shaped like a cheese wheel, so it's short and fat, really, really big, and it has beautiful orange flesh, and it's very, very tasty. Um, it's much better than a sugar pie pumpkin seed that you might buy, and these things last forever. I harvested these at the end of summer, and I just processed them and put them in my freezer. Um, I went ahead and roasted them, pureed them, and then put them in the freezer. And there was no sign of rotting on any of these. All of my sugar pie pumpkins months ago had started to rot. Um, so I will not be growing sugar pie anymore. I will simply be growing the Long Island cheese. Um, and this is an heirloom. Also, one great thing about this is last year, I think I pulled out about 120 squash vine borers out of all of my squash. The borers did get this but the plant still produced. Um, and squash bugs, they never even bothered this. The things like the butternut squash and the pumpkin are great because I can bring those in, I can put them on a shelf and I'm done with them. Whereas most things I bring in, I have to process or do something with within a day or two so that it doesn't spoil. Okay, the next group of plants we're gonna talk about are going to be what's called your nightshades. Those are your tomatoes and your peppers and your eggplant. Um, let's first talk about tomatoes. The Amish paste tomato is a tomato that's really good for making sauces. It has a small amount of seeds and a small amount of gel, but a large amount of flesh. These produce very large fruits, much larger than other paste varieties, like let's say San Marzano. Um, and I will throw a picture up so you can see um, the size difference between the two of those. Um, also, I did not have any blossom end rot with these. Um, the San Marzanos that I used to grow were plagued by that. And that's something that's caused by low calcium, whether the plant's not uptaking it or if it's not available. But either way, um, these are my go-to for my sauce and my salsas. Um, the other variety of tomato that I grow, this is actually a hybrid. It is called a sun gold hybrid. It's a small gold cherry tomato, very high production. This will continue to produce after your other tomato plants kind of peter out in the summer because it gets too hot. Um, so this one is mainly for fresh eating, but I do like that hybrid. And then of the peppers I'm growing, the first one I wanted to talk to you about is a California wonder pepper. Um, this is an heirloom. It's your typical green bell pepper nice thick flesh, nice big fruit and very high producer. These are great for dehydrating and great for freezing because of that thick wall that they have. Um, they will reconstitute really well um, in a from a dehydrated state. So that's why I grow those. Um, I do also have what's called a sweet pickle. This is a pepper. Now, if you like banana peppers, this sweet pickle is the way to go. This has a much thicker flesh than your standard banana um, pepper. This will hold up to canning much better. So with these, I'll be mainly canning these um, as a pickled pepper um, for topping pizzas and salads and such. My last pepper is going to be what's called Craig's Grande Jalapeno Pepper. This is an heirloom. I like this because it is a big jalapeno, which means less harvest time, um, less time waiting for fruits to develop so that I can can things. Um, so this just makes my life a bit easier. Corn. I do grow an heirloom variety of corn called Who Gets Kissed Sweet Corn. This one 
This Who Gets Kissed Sweet Corn produces about an eight inch long ear. Um, it has great pollination if you've ever grown corn before. Each one of the tiny silks of corn has to be pollinated. If one of them's not, that kernel on your ear, ear of corn is not going to develop. So um, this has had really great pollination for me and it has a little bit of a longer harvest window. So that means that if my corn ear is ready to be harvested, but I can't get to it because I'm harvesting everything else, um, then this will wait for me for a short amount of time, um, longer than some other varieties. So that's uh, why I like that corn variety. And the last thing I wanna to talk to you about are flowers. So I typically will grow your black oil sunflower seed. However, I'm not going to grow that this year because the seeds that I get from it are, well, let's just say puny. They're small, they're not plump. Um, I'm mainly growing those for livestock feed. But what I'm gonna be growing instead is something called a mammoth gray stripe sunflower. Now that will produce a head that's about 12 inches, can get up to 15. And the seeds on that are a gray striped seed, but they're big and they are plump. So that will be good for human consumption as well as for livestock, the chickens, um, the goats to supplement them. So that's what I'll be growing for sunflowers this year. Um, and that is a hybrid. And my last one is calendula. I used to grow what was called Pacific Beauty. And although these were very prolific plants and would grow quite well, I stumbled upon this variety from Baker Creek and it is called Orange King. When I'm growing calendula, I am growing it for its petals. So I'm gonna throw a picture up and you'll see the difference. This plant produces so many more petals per bloom that I don't have to harvest nearly as many of these flowers, nor do I have to spend as much time waiting to get them because it does take me quite a few flowers to fill up my dehydrator so that I can dehydrate those petals to use in things like salves and um, skin care um, or wound care and things like that. That's the calendula that I would stick with if you are wanting some high production flowers. There is one other thing I did wanna talk about and that's potatoes. So for my white potatoes, I will grow Kennebec. That's really your most popular type of uh, potato. If you have potato chips from the store or French fries, that's typically what they're making um, those products out of. A Kennebec potato, when stored properly, will store well over six months. So that's why I like that variety. It's also a high producer and it's fairly quick to harvest. And the last type of potato is my sweet potato. So I typically grow Beauregard sweet potatoes, extremely high producer. I grew 120 square feet of sweet potatoes last year and I ended up with a yield of over 300 pounds of sweet potatoes. Um, so great yield, super nutrient dense food. Um, if something were to happen and you couldn't get food, that's gonna be a great one to feed your family on. The Beauregard will consistently produce either a nice roasting size potato, or if I leave them in the ground too long, um, a much bigger sweet potato, which you can still cut into chunks and um, boil or roast. Um, so still um, a fantastic product from, uh, from those sweet potatoes. So anyways, I hope you guys found this interesting and useful. If you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them in the comments below.